Okay, so we've seen the mounting side of the magnetic coils, which are basically being wound around the magnets, but with coils that couple through the iron. So this, again, what you're looking at here is you're looking at the magnets, the, sh the shape of the magnets. Um, it's this shape because we only need this much arc. And I had them because I had them cut years ago to make this type of motor. All right, so they're, these are barium ferrite magnets. They've just been painted. Uh, I held one of them up for you and showed you that they rust. They're bonded to this metal plate. And this is a metal plate surrounding the whole disc so that the fields in this metal plate pass from the bottom to the next bottom to the next bottom to the next bottom so they're not they're not going through the metal shield they're just passing through as if they're straight lines from here to here at this angle notice this angle right is in a V also, almost like a pyramid shape, right? So you have 10 poles. So you have north and you have south poles. You can see the south symbol here, south symbol here, south symbol. The ones with the dots on the front of the wheel as depicted in the video are north poles. You can see there's a north pole here. So there's a north pole here, north, north, north. So instead of letting these magnetic fields ride out in a loop fashion, we make the lines go through the iron straight, but at this angle. Notice the angle. It's a wider V than this V because we don't, we don't want quite, quite the same strength out here that we want in here. So what we're actually doing here is we're causing the magnet to be nonlinear. In this picture, we showed you the top version. All right, once again, we don't want the magnetic fields coming out like this and going around and coming out like this and going around. What we want the magnetic field to do is cross the iron in straight lines. No nonlinearity. So now we have a linear thing and we have a nonlinear thing. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to put a little bitty spike into these coils. And we want the nonlinear portion of the way the magnets are arranged to flip their fields magnetically. Now, we've mounted this disc on the machine. This point, this point, and an adjuster so that we can get the angle to the magnets. And we've angled it off a little bit by this adjuster so that one side of the wheel is a little bit more nonlinear than the other side of the wheel. Mm. And you can see that if you get alongside this wheel. This is exactly how the coils are arranged. Why, um, wh wh why did you want that nonlinearity? Because I want the magnet to switch itself. Okay. And about how many degrees of, of angle do you put on the base plate? On which plate? On, on this plate. You say this is this is adjusted down like this. Right. Well, about half, half about degree, no degree? no no about three degrees. Oh, that much. Yeah, three degrees because we want we want this wave to show up. We we want to be it, we want the the magnetic material to go around in a nonlinear fashion. Okay. And it's going to be more like an ocean wave when it goes around. It's going to have a high 
in a low, and it's going to keep doing that. Wow. All right? Very subtle. Yeah, very subtle. We want to mix this. Now, what you're seeing right here is this timing plate without the magnets on it. It's facing this direction. All right? So you can see how we've wired these coils. We've taken the two bottoms of these two and put them together, and we've taken the, the two tops of these two and put them together, and we've taken the two bottoms of these two and put them together, and we've done that all the way around the wheel. Okay, now, now what we've done after we built our magnetic disc, and we, we, because it, as I said earlier, we want these magnetic fields to be concentrated in one area and not quite as much in the other area. So we want the magnet to be, its magnetic field to be shaped in a non-linear fashion so that it can switch. Here's, in this circle, see the dots? That's where we know there's 10 positions. So we're only going to use five of these positions because we only want to cause the nonlinear on the north poles. Because when the magnet flips, when it shakes, and the barium changes, we want the motor force for free, which means zero current on the meter that you're looking at. And that means that this motor has given it a little trigger signal to flip the magnet. And we want this to be sucked in because we want it in a traction. That's free for the taking when you're in a traction. When you're in repulsion, it costs you energy. Yeah. We want it to be sucked in to this nonlinear field. And then we want the magnet to flip back the other direction. And we want to add that pulse again. So that's why we've done north-south poles, or we would have done all north poles. Yeah. Because it's typical of the type of generators that we do. Now, I'm going to bring up a very important point here. I want everybody to understand. This was my original motor, but See, Jim Watson discovered the arrangement a little bit different. And how you can tell that he discovered the arrangement a little bit different is, see, these aren't in line with the magnets. They're advancing. So he's creating that nonlinear field. Those are barium ferrite ring speaker magnets. So we're getting this switching effect automatically in these poles. Except Jim, for, Jim Watson forgot one thing, that that should have been metal underneath here and metal on the back where the poles came through. So therefore, he can't take advantage of getting any advancement for free. So therefore, he has to supply current to keep it advancing. Where we're not supplying current, we're asking the magnetic field itself to give us the current for free. So I want to point out that even though the two machines, this is depicted as something which is the original Bedini type converter built. That is the Bedini type converter in what I'm showing you. That's the correct way to build it. In this picture, you can see the, the, a little more clearly, if you look down here, these marks indicate the 10 positions. And you can see that there is no metal on this side of the coils. Normally you would put metal on this side. No, because here's 
here's something that if when you're dealing with with this type of energy or you, it it loves resistance you get more energy with resistance so we're actually spacing this further here between here and here with metal to get the resistance because negative negative energy manifests itself in resistance even tesla knew that that's why he built the tesla coil with many 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 turns to get that voltage as high as he could to get the negative energy or the radiant energy out of it here you see on the mill that this wheels on the dividing head and you see all the marks to place those v-shaped magnets so we've divided it in degrees you can see here it's kind of a little bit hard to see but you can see right down here I think it says 105 degrees hmm. all these degrees tell us where we're gonna place these magnets what are these what are these ridges here? They're ridges. It looks like a hot plate. Yes. <laughs> well, the metal was completely rusted. We rusted the metal completely before we assembled it. So after the metal sat out and rusted and rusted and rusted. Why did you let it rust? Well, we let it rust so it wouldn't be conductive. We were doing a different experiment. Okay. So what we did was we put it on the rotary table and we put not this milling cutter but a wire brush oh, okay in it and we spun the rotary table around right and carved off the rust you can see the rust in here but see it doesn't make any difference because the barium ferrite magnet's going to rust on it anyway right. so there'll be a, a just a big group of rust underneath that magnet now we'll show you something very important we took the milling cutter and and we divided the 10 poles and so we wanted to know where to place the center of the magnet. So we measured the magnet at the smallest end and at the largest end and put two dots on the magnet and then we could just place it on this line and it would be right on line where we wanted it. Okay. This picture is um, the stages where we're just bonding these coils after we've sealed the back of this right here, this metal. And we've pounded the welding rod. And now what Gary's going to do, who's standing there, is he's going to grind these to the levels that we want on each coil because we want a nonlinear function. We want to bring some of them down and we want to bring some of them up. Uh, when you're dealing with something that's re-gauging, you have to be non-linear or it's not going to re-gauge. Yeah. You have to create a, an imbalance in the magnetic field. So, so these every, are different heights. Every one would be would would be a different height. Yes, they would they would they they wouldn't correspond. See, remember right. we're in a tilt by so many degrees. Right, 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 right. Notice these back here. It was done on purpose, everybody. So, just a qu question. These are the, are the low ones here? Yes. Would that be the high end of the tilt? Or the yes, lower? that's the high end of the tilt. Right. We're going to tilt it, yeah. and these are going to move away. Right. We're going to concentrate more energy right. on these when we tilt in, Right. and these are going to have less energy. Yeah. yeah. So, we're causing an imbalance in it. Okay, notice we have... We have not hidden the turns from you. There are 2,206 turns of number 18 wire there. Okay, and what we're going to do after that is we're going to make, what we're going to do is we're going to connect these two wires, this one on this bottom and this one on this bottom together, and then we're going to connect this top and this top together and this bottom and this bottom together and this top and this top together and we're going to do that all the way around so it's 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 like a merry-go-round in a way yeah, yeah. because we we want to send the electricity we want to send the little spike we want the spike to flip 
around back and forth because we know we're going to get a 